Alleluia. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as some of your own poets have said, for we too 
are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given us assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. A reading from the le first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. 
but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And this is the wrong gospel. <laughs> We're going to start again with the sixth Sunday of Easter. <laughs> Same gospeler, John. Jesus 
said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be offered and transformed into your blessings, O Lord, in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. We are with God as, as a river meeting the sea. Our waters mingle. In the bay and the brackish water, our humanity mixes with the wider sources of creation. This is a way of saying the kingdom of God is within you and around you, and let down your nets for a catch. Let down your nets into the deep water for a splendid catch. Jesus, in John's gospel, is one with God. From the beginning, in the Holy One, he lives and moves and has his being from the beginning. Other Gospels emphasize being on the river, on the way, on the journey from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Abide in me. Christ says, you will know that I am in my Creator, and you in me, and I in you. There's a way to come to know this uh, quite intimately in the architecture of churches to experience this immediate presence with the Creator, the primal love of the Creator. And it may be better known in Eastern Orthodox architecture. Go into an Eastern Orthodox church with a dome. Most of our Western churches, like ours here, have a peaked roof, an aisle, sometimes a steeple pointing upward. And we enter at one end, the cross is at the other end, we listen to the word and pray and move down the aisle toward resurrection and new life. In Orthodox churches, Orthodox churches begin where they end. I'm inside the dome at the beginning and in the culmination. At the beginning is my end, and in my end is my beginning, the eternal present. I once sang in a church that had mosaic glass spreading across a 100-foot dome, and in the mosaic, from one side to the other was the face of Christ. A, a cheek here, a, a, an eye there, a cheek here, a chin, the presence of Christ in the Empyrean, in the stars, if you will. And the light that we shared went up and down, and the sound that we heard went up and down. And in the silence and in the song, we were in the dome, and in the womb of God. 
C.S. Lewis, whom most of you probably know and have read or have heard of, was a medieval scholar before he was a novelist. And he tells of that a peasant standing in a mud hut in the 14th century looking up into the night sky would have heard music in the heavenly spheres. Okay, physicists have told us the heavenly spheres are not exactly as we once imagined, but would our dweller have been wrong in hearing the music in his ears at night as he heard Gregorian chant in the cathedral by day? The carbon in the stars is the same as the carbon in our blood. Could not the sound of the universe be reverberating? What we do on earth, what we do with our bodies, resonates with the heavens. We are one with creation. If all this sounds somewhat mystical, it is. We've lost the mystery that's at the heart of creation. Life has become too linear as even physicists who I don't understand uh, seem to know. There's too much this and then this and then that. This versus that, left versus right, on the one hand, on the other hand, I and you, we and they, as if we were all dualities. Our computers fire on either or reactions. Where is the Holy Trinity? Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, where is that mystery of interaction that is really in every important every action in which there's an I and a you and a thou, a spirit that moves between us. Now it's time for an advertisement. So all consider going to the adult education offering of spiritual direction which Cami will be offering after the service to find a way to the, for the practice of the I and the you and the thou, one way to practice it. The self-offering of God in Christ is beyond measure. Do you know someone of whom you can say, she or he was a friend of mine before she or he was my friend? She came to me when I was a nobody and made me a somebody. So begins our relationship with our creator. So begins the relationship with our mothers. At the beginning of our lives, if we are fortunate, they gave us life through many sacrifices and self-offerings. They helped navigate the river, bouncing off along rocks and currents and off one shore and then another. Our parents, uncles, godparents, neighbors, teachers guide us for a while. Then they and we fall away in our finitude or other ways that we are separate from the fullness of God. We're not mature until we've forgiven our mothers and fathers, and ourselves for the ways we fall short. They and we are the river, we're not the sea. And as someone said, we often need to work through the holy trinity of therapy, mother, father, and me, until we enter the sea of God's mercies in the holy trinity of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Now here's one way to enter this practice. At home or in a place you might find during the week, you might try our garden out here and its labyrinth. Choose a time of silence. I love the shared silences we have here, the anticipatory silence. Choose a time of silence and become the peasant at the door of the hut, 
Choose an alert posture and be still. Breathe. Listen. One discipline I try to remember to follow is to turn my hands upward for a moment, in which I'm not grasping so much, and it, it seems to almost signal a new chemistry within me. Breathe, listen, be still. And if you're like me, at first, your mind will be anything but still. You will bounce off one shore, one thought, then another. But stay there. Stay here. Abide. Don't just do something. Be there. Be here. We live in what is like an industrial river of thoughts, where many things float by. Cardboard boxes, stray thoughts, McDonald's wrappers, a dead bird. Take notice and let them float by. Keep your sight on where we are headed and where we come from, to the sea of God's mercies, where God picks up the waters as rain and delivers them again to the source. Abide in Christ who delivers us to the source. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, and who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now demonstrate the hope that fills our hearts by turning to God in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all ministers of the gospel, that they may preach the word boldly and without apology. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all leaders of nations, that they may be unrelenting in their quest for peace. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all the suffering people of this world, especially those who suffer for doing right. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all mothers, that they may impart love and wisdom to their children and grandchildren. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all the sick and the dying, that they may find life in you. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all that have died, 
that they may rest in that place where there is no grief, but life eternal. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we pray. We pray, we pray for our, our church, church as, as we, we discern together your loving invitation and divine, divine vision for our future. May, may we listen to each other, to your spirit, and to our, our own hearts, hearts in order to become, to become a clear light and welcoming, welcoming host to all who might journey our way. way. We, we pray, pray for Gail, our, our senior warden, Melissa, our junior warden, our interim director, Father Dan, and the entire church staff. We pray for the members of the vestry and to all, all those volunteering their time on the profile committee. May we embrace our differences, our unique gifts, and our deep need for each other, weaving our story together in a tapestry of love that welcomes all who enter here. I ask your prayers also for these who are in the hospital, homebound, Michael, John, those who may be suffering, Ginny, George, Ben, those who have died. Brett, Axel, Paul, and those known to us alone. Gracious God, it is the power of your abundant and life-giving spirit that we call upon you in prayer. Deepen our hope in your presence and your promise. Hear us in your tender love, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. I guess we can still touch. <laughs> I guess we can touch hands now. God's peace. I hope you have a yellow insert. We are trying to print most of our announcements now, uh, so we don't have to say all of them. However, there will still will be some special announcements. Um, Zachary? I'm happy to let you know that you don't need to be a medieval scholar <laughs> or an astrologist, or an author. You don't need to look to the stars to hear music in the spheres, and you certainly don't need to go to a cathedral to hear Gregorian chant. In fact, you can come here at 8 p.m. and hear Gregorian chant in some complex. Uh, and, and I just resonated with everything we heard in the sermon because it, it all screamed some complex to me. Uh, so I encourage you to come and, and uh, find those connections for yourself, and there's only a few weeks left to do so. Tonight at 8 o'clock, uh, the sun won't set until about 8.20 when service will be over, so uh, it'll be plenty light to drive. Hope to see you there. Next week, uh, also a special occasion, uh, the 21st, uh, next Sunday at 3 o'clock, we'll have Evensong here, uh, which is a uniquely Anglican tradition, uh, choral Evensong with our very own Sanctuary Choir, uh, playing the music uh, and singing the music of Rafe von Williams, who's a very important composer in our tradition. And also, if you are happen to be a, a person who uh, likes the English royal family and is, is interested in some of that stuff, some of the music will do for Evensong was also done at the recent coronation. So you can hear that right here at Good Sam in Corvallis. And by the way, about San Complin, in case you didn't know, we are the only ones doing this in the entire state. 
You can only hear this right here in Corvallis, nowhere else. Give it a chance, I think you may like it. See you there. Good morning. I have an announcement because I am part of the Parish Profile Committee. And for the next three Sundays, we have tables set up in the coffee hour. One is a table for you to sit down and talk with one or two of our members about what you would like to see in our next chapter, and particularly what characteristics of a rector you are looking for. The second table is a right brain table to stimulate your non-linear thinking about the next chapter of our church. And there's drawing supplies, there's little trigger words to get you thinking, and there's a card cards with quotes on them. So take a look at the activities table and see if that might bring up some ideas for you for the next chapter. There's also a pad of paper and a pen, so if something comes to you, write it down and stick it in the little collection box there. And for the younger kids, there's a separate table with younger kids' coloring books there. So see you there, and if you would like to come to the forum down the education hall, grab your coffee and come and join us. Thank you. Just a couple of brief things. One is that if you did not get the yellow insert, I saw you looking around and I don't think you did. It should be available on the way out the door. Yes, I'm seeing a nod. It has lots of information in it, so take it home and keep it and take a good look at it. Um, coming up, just a heads up, we are going to the Knights baseball game on July 2nd with fireworks. I've already bought 30 tickets and sold 12 of them. So if you'd like to go, come and see me about that. Um, all the details will come later. You don't need to know all the details, but it's in the evening, fireworks, baseball, be a lot of fun. Next Sunday, right after the service, the middle school and high school youth group are going on an outing. We'll be going to lunch at the Spaghetti Factory in honor of our middle school graduate. And then we'll be going uh, miniature golfing at the Beaver Falls Golf Course. So um, I have permission slips for that outing with me today that I'll bring to coffee hour. You can also get one next week. And um, I hope that the youth will join us for that really fun outing. The uh, lunch is paid for by the youth group ministry and it's recommended that you bring, I think, $7.50 for golfing. Thank you. Hello, I'm Cynthia Rodriguez, and I've been asked to speak uh, as part of the series of why we came to Good Sam and why we stay. Well, the shortest version is I came to Good Sam because I'm a cradle Episcopalian, and you're the only game in town. The longer version is, in high school, I became a Jesus freak. Any of you remember that particular designation? And I was done with my Episcopal church. It was a dead church, bleh. And I spent a lot of time hanging around evangelical and Pentecostal churches. Somewhere in my 20s, it began to dawn on me that I might like them, and I don't look like them and they all dress in a certain way and they kind of say the same things and they kind of, or at least it seemed to me, um, you know, blessings on our evangelical brothers and sisters. Uh, but it felt a little judgy and it felt hard to be a single woman there. And I began to wander back to the Episcopal Church. And I have found freedom to figure out my own course to God and what Jesus is to me, and how to live out my spirituality. Why I stay here? Well, I stay here because of the Episcopal Church and because of you. Um, again, I have been, I've been so proud of this church. Let's face it, this used to be the church of the wealthy landowners and slave owners, and how this church has become a beacon of civil rights and welcoming and rights for all is very impressive. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And things like um, 
the divine companionship, the uh, spiritual nurture, um, those sorts of things that work quietly here. And because of you all, the basis of my longest and dearest friendships are here. And I'm not good about inviting lots of people to dinner and stuff. But I've got to say, you all weave into my life. So thank you for letting me come here and stay here. Walk in love as Christ loves us, offering the gift of God.
Love thy name. Have we given? The Lord be with you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come to me. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. gifts of God for the people of God and take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please join in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the blessing of the Holy One, Christ our brother, born of our sister Mary, and the Holy Spirit, who moves through all things, be with you now. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise to God. Hallelujah.